Last week, after months of rumors, SeaWorld Orlando officially announced their sixth roller coaster, Pipeline. Manufactured by B&M, this ride will be the world debut of their new surf coaster model, and it looks… interesting to say the least. That said, I'm a bit confused why this is being made, for the sake of B&M and SeaWorld. Pipeline is such a bizarre addition to the park, and in this video, I'll try explaining why. As always, if you enjoy, please feel free to subscribe, and let's get into it. So, what makes a surf coaster a surf coaster? Well, there's a few things that make it unique. Firstly, this is one of the only B&M coasters with a launch, and the second with an LSM launch. While the nearby Incredible Hulk uses drive tires to launch its way up the first hill, an LSM launch packs in a lot more punch due to the magnetic forces it exerts on the train. This style of launch is seen often on Intamin roller coasters like Velocicoaster and Pantheon, but B&M has used it once before on Thunderbird at Indiana's Holiday World. Having personally been on Thunderbird, I think the launch there is great, and I'd expect Pipeline to be similar. The second thing that makes this ride stand out are the trains. Like with recent Intamin launch coasters, Pipeline will have two across seating, which is a welcome change to the usual four we tend to see on B&Ms. More importantly though, these seats will be elevated as a sort of successor to the B&M stand-up model. And that's where the problem lies, as the original stand-up model was kind of a failure. It seems like the general consensus is that these rides aren't all that fun, and I'd have to agree. I've been on Green Lantern at Six Flags Great Adventure, and it puts a lot of strain on your legs and just ends up being incredibly uncomfortable. The layout of these rides can be pretty good though, which is why many parks have decided to just switch out the train with a more traditional seated version. Rougarou at Cedar Point opened as a stand-up coaster, but later made the switch to floorless trains. That, paired with the fact that none of these models have been bought since 2012, proves that most parks don't really want a stand-up coaster. As for SeaWorld Orlando, I think this ride would have made a lot more sense in their lineup if everything had gone to plan. It is a first-of-its-kind ride, which is a nice perk, but this park has also needed a solid launch coaster for a while now, and this fills that gap nicely. However, the problem there lies with SeaWorld's previous edition, Icebreaker. That ride was originally intended to be a family launch coaster, opening with a lower 48-inch height requirement. As problems arose with the ride's restraints, however, it eventually got bumped up to 54 inches, like SeaWorld's more intense roller coasters. While SeaWorld apologized for this when it happened, it seems unlikely now that Icebreaker will ever return to being a family coaster as intended. So now SeaWorld is stuck with having two thrilling launch coasters, which is a bit of a strange situation. Not a deal breaker for the ride itself, but not ideal either. Despite that, the surf coaster does have some stuff going for it. LSM launch coasters have proven to be incredibly popular and well received models, and with B&M being one of the most consistent and reliable manufacturers out there, this model does have some potential. Not to mention, this will be a new style of stand up seating, with the seat moving up and down with the forces of the ride to mimic a surfing sensation. I think it's an interesting concept and has the potential to fix some of the problems of the original model. Still, I think attempting this stand-up model again is a risky move. If the seats have the same level of discomfort, I think the future of this model is dead on arrival. Honestly, I could see the movement in the seats making the issue even worse, exerting more forces on the rider's legs. I do wish this was just a sit-down coaster, as I'd love to see B&M's take on the ride. Unfortunately, I think the layout looks pretty boring as well, so I'm not sure what to expect. While it might shock the world and be absolutely incredible, I honestly expect this ride to be middle of the road. But what do you think? Be sure to tell me in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this quick analysis, please be sure to like and subscribe. Check out this video for my thoughts on Dollywood's most recent edition, and I'll see you next time.